Well, today we are going to talk about five bad habits that ukulele players tend to have, especially beginners, but not just beginners. Um, and we're going to talk about how to kind of overcome those. Um, and so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we got five things to talk about. And the first one we're going to talk about is hold smarter, not harder. And so what I mean by this is, you know, when we're playing the musical instruments and we're learning the, these new skills, we tend to death grip everything that we do. And this is just sort of a human response to things. We, we tend to overcompensate what we lack in dexterity with strength. And so when we're not getting a good tone, our first inclination is to push harder. And that's not what we want to do. We actually just want to push smarter. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. Well, if you're fretting any note on the ukulele at any given point in time, your left hand does not want to be right in the middle or all the way back here. You rather want to be all the way up here, right up next to those fret wires, right? No matter what you're playing. And to this day, I catch myself with this where I'm accidentally, you know, a little bit behind. And it's remarkable how just this positioning can help make a note sound good. For instance, if I fret it incorrectly, so I'm going to go all the way back here, I'm going to apply a certain amount of force and it sounds like this. That sounds like garbage. <laughs> Right? I'm not going to push any harder. I promise. I'm not going to push any harder. I'm just going to move it up to that fret. I'm not pushing any harder at all. I swear, if anything, I'm actually pushing a little less hard. Crazy, right? Now, I could push harder here and eventually get a, a sound that's a little bit better, but now I'm pushing with like three, four, five times more force than I need to be. And so getting right up next to that fret wire allows me to push smarter, not harder, right? Making sure that we're getting right up next to it. And again, it's really amazing, isn't it? How bad this sounds and how good this sounds. I'm actually pushing a little less hard as I move up. Crazy, right? So more often than not, when we get a bad sound, we just death grip it. My favorite analogy for this is imagine that you're standing at a crosswalk and you click the button, you know, for the crosswalk to turn. And uh, and then the light turns and the crosswalk doesn't turn. Well, what the heck? It didn't, it didn't work. So what do we do? Do you go over there and click the crosswalk button again? Or do you go over there and smash that button a couple times because it didn't work the first time, right? I'm definitely guilty of smashing the button. Works the same on an elevator, right? Or a remote control on a TV. Whenever we we don't really know why something's not working, we try to overcome it with strength, and this is especially true. It's one of the reasons why I uh, tend to be too rough on my video game controllers, is if I'm really bad at a game, I tend to do it all harder, and then my controller gets loose, and I realize it's just me not being good at it. <laughs> so push harder, uh, excuse me, push smarter, not harder. Another great example of this, and this is uh, one of my favorite exercises for all skill levels, including myself right now, um, is a G chord. So everyone try a G chord, which you know is uh, index here in the second fret of the C, ring finger here on the third fret of the E, and the middle finger here on the second fret of the A. Now, you might be used to playing your G like this, in which case you're, you're making it way harder on yourself, right? Get those fingers each up respectively, right up next to those fret wires. That alone is going to make a big difference. But go ahead and fret your G chord as you normally play it, and then play it. Should sound fine, because I'm guessing most of you have played G chords before, even if you're a beginner, right? Well, now what I want you to do is I want you to take all of the pressure off all three of these fingers so that they are just touching the string. So it sounds like this. The G will continue ring open because nothing's playing it, and then... Now what I want you to do is I want you to start on the C string with your index finger. I want you to very gradually push down with that finger. Make sure you're right up next to that fret wire until you get a crystal clear sound. Then do the same for the next one. Very gradually increasing the pressure until you get a good sound. Then the last one. And then play the chord. I'm pushing about half as hard as I was before. And I've been doing this exercise for over 10 years. And that's why this is so cool. I bet a lot of you will be pushing like a fifth as hard as you normally do because we just don't think about this enough, right? And so that's the first main mistake people make and it applies for this. It also applies for bar chords too. You know, if you're trying to play like a B flat chord and maybe you're doing the full bar version, make sure that finger's getting right up next to that, that fret wire. The hardest place that bar on a ukulele is fret one. So if you're trying to play a B flat and your finger's all the way back here, you're gonna be pushing so hard, but if you move it up, it becomes much easier. It's the same sort of logic. 
So step one, our first habit, push smarter, not harder, right? And this applies for strumming. Maybe you're strumming too loud, picking too loud. Everything we do can be too hard. So just take a step back and think, hey, can I do this softer? And odds are good. If the answer is yes, you can also do it better just because of that. So now number two on our list of five is trying to do too much. And I got quite a few messages uh, and comments on the live lesson forum for this of, you know, I'm trying to do too much. I, I'm paralyzed by choice. I, I want to do all these different things, right? And that's probably the most common mistake these days. Ironically, this is kind of a product of, um, you know, YouTube and this digital age that we live in. Even when I learned ukulele, YouTube just came out basically when I started learning the ukulele. And there were no ukulele tutorials on YouTube. Um, and so when I started getting serious, Ukulele Underground just launched, and that was perfect for me because it gave me kind of this singular thing to look at. I was actually fortunate in that I kind of had to learn whatever I saw there. I didn't have the luxury of, ooh, what do I like more? And that luxury is a detriment now because we tend to try to do everything. We want to do everything, right? So the best way to overcome this is the same sort of thing that you want to do for really any other skill. You want to set yourself sort of a limit to just work on one thing. Set a timer and set a deadline. The deadline idea is what I really like because as a content creator, somebody who makes tutorials and things, well, if you wait till you make the perfect tutorial, you'll never actually make one. You'll, you'll, you'll make them and you'll think, oh, that's not good enough. And you know, I'm going to, I'm going to move on. And so by when you're trying too much, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're focusing in on one thing. We'll talk more about the deadlines in a moment. But what I like to think about is, you know, find a small list that you can actually consume. Think of it like a buffet at a, you know, at a restaurant. If, if you take just a little bit of everything, you, uh, well, you're going to end up, you know, wishing that you focus more on one of those yummy foods and less on the others. So, but anyways, when you're working on this, what I want you to try is I want you to try to pick a couple things, maybe two or three things, and stick with them for a while. Do not, you know, immediately move on to the next thing just because it's difficult or because you think you don't like it. Stick with it. Develop the muscle memory. Develop the techniques that are needed. Try to actually establish yourself within what it is. My favorite way to do this is to turn off all the noise. So if you're somebody who uses like an iPad to practice and you have a big like database of different things to work on, maybe try printing off the PDF of the thing that you want to work on and go somewhere and only bring that one PDF with you and practice it. Because now when you're like, oh, maybe I should do something else. Well, don't go on Instagram or on a website or whatever else to find all those different options. Just stick with that one. Just stick with that one thing. And maybe you print off a couple things, a few things on this. And that's fine too. But it's really trying to focus in on working on fewer things and trying to enjoy it. There's a lot of that can be said about like mindfulness and meditation with all of this, right? Where uh, I find myself all the time after I put my son to bed where I'm playing a video game on my phone, listening to music on my stereo, watching a TV show on my TV, and then maybe streaming something on my iPad and realizing, ooh, this isn't healthy. This is too much because I'm sucking at my video game. I'm not actually getting anything from the music. I have no idea what's going on in the TV show. And oh my gosh, my iPad was on too. If I just focus and did one of those things for 30 minutes and then next 30 minutes did another one of those things, I would actually get a lot more out of it. It's sort of like if you ever try reading a book while you're watching TV and doing something else, you don't get any of it. You end up spending three hours not remembering anything instead of breaking it up into times and retaining by just focusing on one thing. So that second thing is you're trying to do too much. Try to pare it down, try to be more mindful with it, try to give more of your attention to just a singular thing at a time and see if that can help, you know, help you progress more. Now the, the third thing, which I really like, is the antithesis to the second thing it kind of builds off of it at the same time, which is you're not moving on. So it's kind of funny, right? I just said that you're trying too much and now I'm saying you're essentially not doing enough. But what, what I mean by this is that we sometimes get obsessed with playing something and maybe we fall in love with a little song or something like that because we, we love how it sounds or, or whatever. And we, we make some good progress with it. It feels good. 
And then, you know, a week goes by, two weeks go by, three months go by, and you're still working on that song because you just can't get it perfect. And that is a real problem because the reality is that you will never get it perfect until you move on. Most songs that I master, which I don't think I've ever mastered a song in my life, uh, but songs that I get ready for performance or whatever else, I only got to that point by taking a step back and taking a step forward. What I mean by that is I'm working on the song, I'm taking the step back by just working on that song, not wor worrying about all the noise and everything else. But I get to a certain point with that and I take a step forward, despite not feeling like I've mastered that song, I now move on to the next project, move on to something else. I still keep that song that I'm trying to master in my rotation, but I don't make it my focus anymore. I make something new my focus. And what that does is it builds a new perspective for that thing that you're working on. And it makes it oftentimes so that you get further than you would if you just sat with that song. In fact, how I learned the ukulele is I learned a bunch of Jake Shimabukuro songs. And I learned one of them. And I got it to a point where I could play it through. And then I moved on to the next one. And I got that one to a point where I could play it through. But I noticed the first one got a little bit better because of the second. Just because some of these, these you know, movements, these chord progressions, these techniques actually applied to the first song. But I never thought to use them because I didn't do them before. And then by the time I learned the third song, the first two songs were the best they've ever been. And the third song was better because I did the first two as well. And that process continues as you go through. I still to this day will be learning something new and think, oh my God, that helps me unlock something in an earlier song and go back to it. Moving forward is one of the best ways to create that growth. And so it's a fine relationship and everybody's a little bit different for how they want to pursue this relationship of new stuff, working on new things, and just refining the things that they already have, right? The trick is to not fall in the trap of spreading yourself too thin or becoming too hyper-focused on just one idea. So step two and three are really related very closely in this, right? Where you're trying to do too much at once and at the same time, you're not moving on to the next thing. So find that balance for you. You might be somebody who can work on two or three songs at a time, and that's a comfortable number, and that's great. I think that three is a, is a good number for somebody who practices a lot. But you might also be somebody who's a little bit more obsessive and wants to just work on one song. Working on three, you feel like you don't make the progress. Do that one song. Just work on that one song for a month. That's okay, as long as you're making progress and you feel good. But set a timeline, set a deadline. I said that word just a moment ago, where at this moment, no matter where you feel, you're going to move on. So back to the deadline idea. So I mentioned before, I make tutorials and, and things like that for a living. And I didn't for a long time. I, I've been teaching for over a decade now, but I've only been doing video lessons like this for about four or five years, right? And the reason is, is every single time I tried to make a tutorial video, I'd make it, I'd stop it, I'd watch it back and be like, this isn't it. It's not perfect. I'm not ready to publish this yet. And I rinse and repeat that and nothing ever comes out of it because it's never perfect. It's never exactly how I want it. So what actually helped me start creating content was setting deadlines saying, okay, I'm gonna do the best I can. And at this time, no matter what it is, I'm going to submit it. And the first couple tutorials I made, I felt like Ooh, I shouldn't be putting these out in the world because I had this certain expectation. I felt like they weren't quite there. But the reality is they're never gonna be the expectation I want that doesn't mean they're not good enough. And that's the same with learning songs. You're not going to get a song perfect right away. It's not going to happen. You're not even going to get it perfect until you work on a different song and come back to it. So set these deadlines, say, I'm gonna work on this song until you know, Sunday afternoon. And that helps you try to do less, right? Because now you're saying, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have a deadline. I'm gonna work on this one song exclusively or maybe two songs or three songs or whatever it is. Let me work on these things exclusively until Sunday afternoon. And then Sunday afternoon rolls around and you look at how you did it. And maybe you made a lot of progress. Maybe you didn't and that's okay. And now you move on. And now you do that step three of finding something new to work on and trying it. Another thing that goes with this is try new things. When I say not moving on, I also mean try things that you thought you hated. When I was, uh, well, I mean, as far as my musical listening goes, I have never been a huge fan of listening to jazz growing up just didn't interest me. And I took a jazz course in college with my uke, fell in love with it. Still don't listen to it much, love playing it. I love playing it. It's, it's a blast, especially with other people. 
And I never would have done that if I didn't take the plunge to say, oh, I'm going to try this. Even though I think I hate it, I'm going to try it. Ended up loving it. So taste change, that whole thing. It's true for the ukulele too. The most common taste that change is people switch from low G, which they think they like at first, to high G, which they like better in the end. But sometimes it's the other way around, not as often. But not here to get into a flame war of high G versus low G. Although if I were team high G, I do play both, but I digress. So what we have so far for our first three things, number one is hold smarter, not harder, right? And then number two and three are related. You're trying to do too much, so try to pare it down and then you're not moving on. So after you've pared it down and you've set a, a deadline, when you've hit that deadline, move on to something else, continue to make that growth. So now what we're going to talk about is number four. And um, I think number four and five are the most important. I think five is the most important, but number four is a close second. And this is thanks to my wonderful student, Wendy, who's a, an athletic trainer. And, uh, and so we've all heard the phrase, all or nothing, right? Which is, that can be a good phrase. But it's a problematic one when it comes to learning something like a musical instrument, especially when you're an adult. Because adults, in my experience of being an adult and you know working with adults, we tend to be a little bit a little bit obsessive, um, more so than than kids in a lot of ways, where we start a new project and we go you know much more into it. So like let's say it's picking up the ukulele, we think okay, I'm gonna learn. I'm going to sign up for rock class. I'm going to sign up for ukulele underground. I'm going to sign up for Matt Dahlberg's Patreon page, plug, uh, you know, whatever it might be. And I'm going to do all these different things, right? And for the first couple of weeks, you're good about it. You're doing, a, you know, an hour a day, two hours a day, three hours a day, something crazy like that. And you are involved and in doing it, right? Sound like working out or going on a diet or whatever else, right? It's the same type of thing. You're, you're all in, all or nothing. We got this. But then what happens is one day you miss it. And, and then the next day you're running out of time and you think to yourself, okay, well, oh, it's like an hour and a half of stuff. It's just easier to not do it, right? This, is, this happens especially for people that are trying to like get in shape working out, right? It's like, well, I don't have time for my 45 minute elliptical, so I'm just not going to do anything. And that is where a big problem lies. And that is where this new phrase needs to come to mind. This new phrase is not all or nothing, but always something. Thanks again, Wendy. This little mindset, always something, is so beneficial. I, uh, I, I You might have heard me mention before in these sessions I've been picking up skateboarding again. And I'm on the wrong end of 30 to be skateboarding, um, but I love it. But I, there's a lot of upkeep that kind of takes place with it. I've been doing physical therapy for my knees. I do yoga almost every day. And some days... It comes to the end of the day and I haven't done yoga or physical therapy or whatever else. And I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do it. And I think of this quote, I think always something. It's like, oh, I don't have to do a 30 minute yoga routine and a 30 minute physical therapy routine. If it's the option of doing both of those or nothing, well, let's have something in between. I'm going to do five minutes of each. Is it enough? Maybe not, but it's something and it keeps me consistent with what I'm doing. So with the ukulele, you might go a day and realize, oh, I haven't practiced. Oh man, I don't have time for an hour session. That's fine. Maybe your session is you just pick it up, you tune it, and you play a single song. Because doing something creates consistency. And that's the root of this whole point is consistency matters to make progress. I see beginner players all the time pick up their ukulele, start practicing for three to five hours a day or something ridiculous. They do that for two weeks and then they put their uke down and they don't pick it up again because they had an expectation of themselves to do these three to five hours and then becomes stressful and it's easier to just not do it. So instead of it being like that, just think always something. Make your goal to always do something with the ukulele, even if it's small or whatever else, right? I think that that's so, so helpful for when we're developing these sort of concepts. So, so the fourth message here is always something. Always pick up your uke, always try to do something. You're going to be so much better off for it. And uh, that's probably the second most important thing. And that leads us to the fifth concept. And I think this is the most important thing, especially because my assumption is that 95 plus percent of the people, uh, yeah, 95 percent of the people or more that are watching this video are adults. And this is the most important concept for anyone who has a life outside of ukulele. And that's remember to enjoy yourself. The reason that you picked up this instrument is not 
for, you know, is not because you need to get good at a musical instrument or because you, you know, your parents forced you to or something like that, right? The reason you picked up this instrument, every single one of us should be because we love it, because it was fun, because it, something about it spoke to us and made us want to pick it up. So everything that we do should be with the in direct intention to continue making us want to pick it up. If we're creating practice routines that make us stressed and not want to pick up the instrument, we are doing it wrong. Just because somebody on YouTube says this is the best way to you know, progress quickly, if you hate doing it, then what are you progressing quickly at? If you're just progressing at being a, a better player quickly, well, if you're enjoying it, that's great. But if you're not, you're failing. The best way to progress is to progress at having more fun with it, making it so every time you pick up the uke, it's more fun than the last time you put it down. And that needs to be our direct intent every single time we're working with this. So we want to practice towards things that we enjoy. If you're somebody who loves finger picking, focus on finger picking. Why, why wouldn't you? You might think, oh, I need to learn scales. Well, why do you need to learn scales? Seriously. Well, if you want to be a gigging musician and a professional, then yeah, you, you need to learn scales. But that's not why we're here, right? We're here because it's fun and we're enjoying ourselves. Maybe introduce some scales to see if your tastes change. But if you're really not enjoying it, well, maybe give it an afternoon and you still don't like it. Well, don't worry about it. Sort of like as adults, do we really keep trying foods that we know we didn't like our whole life? Well, maybe we try it every couple of years, but don't worry about it. I'm not going to have a kale salad. I'm old enough now to know that kale and I, we just don't really like each other. We don't have a great relationship. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, am I going to have my son try kale? Sure, because he might end up liking it. And if my son were taking a, you know, music lessons, we'd be teaching him things like patience and responsibility and accountability and all of these things that as adults, we, we should already have in place. And it's not to say that there's not a place for it in learning an instrument, but it's rather the focus of the instrument should be to have a great time, to really enjoy ourselves and kind of unplug from this world that's so crazy. So if you find yourself creating a practice routine around what other people think that you should play, and that's stressing you out and causing you to not enjoy yourself, then you're doing it wrong. And you should really find things that keep you inspired and wanting to play. So the fifth concept here is remember to enjoy yourself. Find things that you really want to play and play them. And that's the fifth concept here. So just to recap, we've got five concepts, right? We've got number one, hold smarter, not harder, right? It's, it's really, really critical that we always look at, okay, how are we fretting? Am I right up next to it? Am I pushing, you know, with minimal force? Same with strumming. We're often strum too hard. Try to be lighter, see if it helps. Almost always, I can guarantee you, you're pushing too hard. We're all pushing too hard. The best player in the world's pushing too hard because they can get a little more efficient at going into the right position. Number two was trying to do too much, becoming, you know, drowning in the sea of content and what they should be trying to do. So focus on one to three things at a time and set a deadline for yourself with those things where you're only going to work on those for maybe a week. Maybe it's two days, maybe it's a month. It depends on you and how you sort of learn information. But that leads to the third thing, which is not moving on. Make sure when you hit that deadline that you move on to something else because odds are good the thing that you're working on is going to get better as you learn new techniques and new skills from other things. So number two is trying to do too much. Number three is not moving on when you've done it enough. Number four is all or nothing. Nope, always something. Make sure that you're always doing something with your practice. Even if it's just five minutes, that's okay. It doesn't need to be an hour. It can be these short sessions. Something is better than nothing. Always something. And number five, the most important one to me, is always remember to enjoy yourself. The reason that we're here is to increase our enjoyment with the ukulele. Every time you learn a new song, the reason for learning that new song will be develop new techniques, develop new skills, develop, 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 develop more enjoyment. That's what all of it is about. The reason why we practice and sometimes it's a struggle and we're, we're not having fun is to have more fun eventually. But if you're not having that more fun eventually, you're doing it wrong. You want to make sure that you're working on things that present an opportunity for you to grow with your love for the ukulele. Maybe that's finger picking. Maybe that's chord melody. Maybe that's just strumming some Irish songs and not doing anything else. It doesn't matter. No one else can define that for you. But those are my five big tips. Now, I got a couple great questions on the rock class forums. I'm going to read them here. Um, and they, they 
they were they were so good that I would have asked somebody to ask them, which is uh, really really great. Um, and so the first one is from Pat, um, and it says. Uh, I've been learning to play for about 10 months now. I have what I think is a bad habit of trying to do too much, such as taking the finger picking course, trying to do a 30 day uke challenge and learn another song that's probably a too, bit too advanced for me, but looks fun to play and sounds so good when I hear the teachers or more skilled players play. I will then get discouraged and lose focus. Is it good to multitask like this? What do you think is a reasonable amount of simultane simultaneous learning a beginner should be doing? And with that, yeah, so it depends on the individual. Some people kind of thrive in doing a lot of different things, but most people don't. Most people don't, you know, do well with the multitasking to that extent. And so if you have like three things that you're really loving, but you feel like you're drowning a little bit, just cut one of them. That one thing is still going to be there for you. It's not that you're saying, I don't like you as much as these other two things. It's saying, I'm going to save you for later. Maybe you can think of that as like you're, you know, it's like when you're eating a meal, sometimes, you know, if you've got Brussels sprouts and garlic mashed potatoes, you eat the Brussels sprouts first to save the mashed potatoes for last. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, right? Same type of deal here. You, you, can, you can put something off and you can have overlap too, where maybe it's three things that you really want to do, but those three things are too overwhelming. Well, maybe you do these two things first, and maybe this one's the thing that you're a little bit more comfortable with, right? And then you set a deadline, and once you hit the deadline, now you do these two things. You keep doing that second thing, do this. And then maybe you, you know, reach a new deadline and you put this one away and you do these two. That's okay too, right? That's what's fun about this is you can you know, set these deadlines, try to do a little bit less. So I think if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, cut it down. Maybe it's just one thing at a time that you're doing. That's totally fine. So another person's uh, uh, Robin posted saying, um, I'm interested to hear Matt's answer to your question, but I'd like to add that I'm a bit like you and that I flit around with whatever interests me at the time. Sometimes I learn a piece well, and sometimes I put it aside and come back to it later. Anyway, I've stopped worrying about it. I might not learn as efficient, efficiently as others, but I enjoy myself, and I think that's what matters. Having said that, although my approach might be inefficient, I still learn and improve it, albeit slowly. So that is the most perfect sentence I've ever read as somebody who's learning ukulele type ever, because... That's what it's all about. And actually, you might not learn as efficiently from the standpoint of, you know, it might take a little bit longer, but you're going to learn much more efficiently from the standpoint of you're going to continue to make progress and stay, you know, with the instrument. The number one thing that happens for beginners is they quit and then they never make any progress. So don't worry about how quickly you're making your progress. Worry about how efficiently you're enjoying yourself. Don't worry about the efficiency here of, is this the fastest way? Worry about the efficiency here. Am I enjoying myself more? And Robin, you are one of the best practicers ever because that sentence is absolutely perfect. And then uh, Pat says, uh, I've seen some, uh, to Robin, I've seen some of your performances. You're very good. If you don't mind me asking, did you approach learning the uke the same way as when you started or as you got better, you became more comfortable just working on whatever interests you at the time? Do you think it's best to try and build new skills by just trying new songs, even though I know they're beyond my current skill level and the chords and technique the song teaches or go through all the courses? I know everyone's different. Just wondering what your advice was. And Robin, who again is awesome said, uh, I learned piano as a kid, so my music theory didn't start from zero, even though I had forgotten most of it by the time I started playing ukulele in my 30s. When I started uke, it was entirely for fun, and I didn't worry about structured learning at all. I did a few Skype lessons for a while, but I think I was scarred by piano lessons as a kid, so I stopped. From there, I learned to play whatever song struck my fancy at the time. If I needed to learn a bit of music theory or a particular technique, I learned it, but it definitely wasn't structured. There are plenty of times that I tried to learn a piece, found it was too hard, put it aside for a year or so before coming back and then posted a picture of the beautiful interstellar theme. So again, if you're rock class members, check that out in the forums for this. And I love that because Robin is very clearly understanding that they're doing this for fun. Now, the lack of structure can be a problem when they aren't able to learn things. And that's where things like these lessons and rock class 101 and all that stuff comes into play to find some of that structure. But the, the number one priority really needs to be having fun. So when you're doubting yourself or whatever else, just take a look at this other member, Robin, who has had a similar experience, but now is, you know, doing it for the fun. And I also have to say the scarred by piano, you know, lessons and things. I totally get that. I took music lessons growing up and um, I had great teachers, but it was very regimented. Music is this. And I did show band in high school and God, I hated it. It wasn't fun. It was just stressful. I, 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 I did not enjoy it. And so... 
Um, my goal as a, as a music teacher is to undo that sort of thing, make the music lessons about fun and make it about, you know, enjoying yourself and finding fulfillment, not trying to be the best player you possibly can be. Um, maybe that doesn't jive with some people, but I don't really care. I think that it's so important that people know that this is about having fun and enjoying yourself as you go through it. So, so really great points there on the, uh, the forum. Um, another comment there from Andy was um, the uh, trying too many things at once and I got to learn that song. And, uh, and so that, that second concept there, definitely try to think of, okay, I'm going to work on maybe two things for the next week or however long, you know, try different intervals, see what works for you and kind of move on from that. But let me go and check out, take a look now at the YouTube chat as we go through. Um, hello, a lot of familiar faces here. Ooh, hi from Vienna, Austri Austria. Awesome, um, that's that's great. Ooh, uh, it must be early there, right? So uh, Connie says, brute force if all else fails. Yep, that's what we all do. Um, Andy says, first tip alone is game changer. Excellent. Uh, uh, P Cash says, should you ever learn two songs at once? So yeah, if it works for you. I, I usually, um, two or three is my um, number when I'm practicing a lot. When I'm uh, a little bit more busy, I go down to one. Just depends on where I am in life. And uh, that's okay. You know, some some weeks are good, others aren't. Um, and so Zill says, good goal. Pick it up for even five minutes on a day. I'm not doing it for an hour. Exactly. Five minutes is awesome. Pre says, you made me feel a little bit better. I haven't missed a day for a year now, even just for warm-up and scales. Awesome. What I tell people that struggle with picking up the uke is make your daily goal to tune it. Seriously. Because on your worst day, you tuned your ukulele. On your best day, you tuned your ukulele and then you played for two hours because tuning wasn't enough for you. So it's all great. Uh, Andy says, I should send you my great kale salad recipe. It'll change your mind. Hey, you know what? I'm up to try it. I'm not going to say I'm going to love it, but hey, maybe it is the thing that turns me around on kale and then I end up liking it. Just like you might think you don't like strumming or high G or something like that. You learn something new that changes your mind. It's all good. So awesome, Andy. Um, Andy also says, I have to say that I always enjoy time on the ukulele, but sometimes get frustrated when I keep making the same mistake in a song or bad sound in a passage and can't figure out how to fix it. So that's a perfect uh, form for the step three for moving on. So, you know, sometimes we make that mistake and we try to practice fixing it over and over and over. And that's where private lessons can really help to have a teacher to maybe show you a different way to work on it. But if that's not an option, that different perspective can oftentimes come from a different song. You might be playing another song that has a similar passage to the one you're making a mistake, but now you're not making that mistake because it was different. And you can take that different approach and put it there and, oh my God, I can do it now. So when you're making the same mistake in the same place over and over, move on. Try other things and come back to it. Uh, Zill says, ew, yuck, Brussels sprouts. See, this is what I'm talking about. I love Brussels sprouts. Can't stand kale, but anyways. Uh, Zill also says, I hated piano lessons as a kid. Enjoyment was missing with songs assigned that I didn't like. I'm having much more fun with the uke as an adult. Yes, that's what it's all about. And to be completely honest with this, it's it's a real shame that that can happen and that happens for so many people. And for me as a teacher, so private lessons are kind of my bread and butter. I've, I've given over 10,000 one-on-one -on -one private lessons now over the last uh, over decade. Um, and it's my dream job. I love doing it. And the reason I love doing it is because I can help other people feel the way I did when I was learning, which is just utter joy. Overcoming a challenge and, and having even more fun with it, right? I'm, I never ever say this is your homework and do this now unless that student likes that. I customize the lesson plan for the individual. Some of them, they're more therapy sessions to get over some of their, you know, traumatic trumpet lessons as a kid or whatever else. And that's fine. Everybody's different. And the way that we enjoy this uke can only be defined by ourselves. If you are enjoying yourself, then you are doing it right. Period. End of discussion. If you are enjoying it, you are doing it right. And so um, if you, uh, I just got a message from uh, P. Cash saying, how do I get a lesson from you? My website is mattukulele.com. Unfortunately, my calendar is full, but whenever I do have openings, they are posted on that website if you ever want to try to do a lesson. Um, but again, unfortunately, I am completely booked at the moment. When my son starts going to kindergarten, uh, hopefully, you know, when this whole pandemic thing blows over in, in a year or so, um, then hopefully I will have uh, have more time for individual lessons. But a couple more uh, questions here. Andy says, it's really too bad about bad childhood music experiences because so much easier to learn when you're young. I wish I'd continued accordion lessons as a kid. Yeah, 
Um, my two years of piano growing up, I hated, although I love my teacher, Dennis. If you're somehow watching this, Dennis, you were great. I just could not stand the stuff we were working on and playing the piano. But it was the most important two years of education of my entire life. And I went to school for music, right? And so um, it does make a big difference. I think that we need to make music more about fun with the kids than we do, you know, yeah, but anyways. Um, Bree says, how do you feel about playing different uke sizes as a beginner? Guess uh, it is again one of those things of doing too much at the same time, even guilty of trying low G on my tenor. Actually, I think it's a great idea to rotate between ukes because it keeps you more flexible in your, your learning approach. When you're first learning a song, what you wanna be is very kind of plastic. You know, you want to be malleable with how that you work on things. And so working on a soprano uke then going to a tenor, your fingers get more comfortable switching more fluidly because you're you're making this change and that helps you learn songs more proficiently as well so i actually it's a great idea now when you're trying to get a song ready for a performance stick with one uke because now you're trying to get the nuances of that one instrument with that one song for performance so when you're learning new information switch it up play all sorts of ukes when you're refining information go to one instrument try to recreate it every time on the same same uh, setup so um, Connie says, uh, OMG, we can't talk about accordion lessons because that's how I learned music as a kid. It was so embarrassing, hated it. I'm so sorry. I think the accordion's awesome. So if that's the embarrassing part, I love the accordion, but, um, I get it. Uh, uh, Andy said, uh, accordion's a great instrument. So versatile. However, I hate it as a kid. School recitals were agony. Yeah, same. I, school recitals, man. I don't like performing. I've had to perform with this for a job and people think, oh, you must love performing. I hate performing, I hate it. I love teaching. Teaching is about saying oops and fixing it. If you say oops and fix it during a performance, people are gonna want a refund, right? I, I like I like mistakes, they're more fun. Um, but anyways, uh, Bree says, great tip, thanks. And Zill says, school was the plastic recorder. Seriously, who develops a love for music with the plastic recorder? Let's get more, uh, more ukulele going with that um, for sure, but. Yeah, pretty crazy how much there is with uh, kids' music. So let's do more ukulele, have more fun. But that's been my five tips for how to have more fun with the ukulele. I hope that you got something out of this. Um, and five tips of bad habits beginners make is the uh, the concept here. But really, it's a lot of things that more advanced players can take. I still think about these five things on a daily basis, and I've been playing the ukulele longer than I haven't in my life. So. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below if you're watching this as a recording. If you'd like to attend next month's lesson, be sure to check out Rock Class 101 where you can find links to this and even help suggest what some of these live lessons can be. Um, as always, I'll be looking for any questions and trying to comment when I can. Uh, thank you so much for coming and I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Uh, too cool. Oh, Andy says, I think many schools are switching from recorder ukulele to, for introducing kids to music. Yeah, let's keep that trend going. So. Thank you guys so much for coming. Take it easy. I'll talk to you soon.